uh, based on the results of the test market we set up in Fresno, I feel that we can launch the campaign immediately. Yeah, well, I'm, uh, I'm preparing a presentation for your inspection. Right. I'll get it to you tomorrow. Yes, June, what is it? This special delivery came in. It's marked personal. Oh, did Fredericks call back? No, he hasn't called yet. Oh. As soon as he does, have him get in touch here, huh? <laughs> what is it? It's the old story. As soon as you start making a book, you start getting sniped at. Says it'll cost me 10,000 bucks to save my career. <laughs> Frankly, if it weren't for June Carstairs, my secretary, I wouldn't have called you at all. Is that so? Why? Well, June worries about me. She insisted that I call you. Look, I, uh, I hope this won't take too long. I mean, doing whatever you have to do. I'm pretty busy. We'd rather not handle this any more than necessary, Mr. Devlin. Sometimes the crime lab can come up with a lead from analyzing these things. Oh, of course, Lieutenant Guthrie. You mean you fellows take these crank letters seriously? Sending a letter of this type is a crime, Mr. Devlin. We take any crime seriously. You don't seem particularly concerned, though. Well, I don't scare easily. I was an infantry company commander in World War II. I was scared then, but there was something more than just a threat from some anonymous crank. Yeah, well, this is a typical blackmail letter pasted with newsprint. Mail from Station 22 out in the sunset, postmarked 11 a.m. this morning. It's addressed with a ballpoint pen. Pretty immature handwriting, possibly disguised. Mm-hmm. You have any enemies, Mr. Devlin? <laughs> well, doesn't everybody? Only mine are business competitors, and they don't go around threatening to expose skeletons in closets. Yeah, well, do you have any idea who could have sent this letter to you? No, not Inspector Grab. Besides, there's nothing in my past I'm ashamed of. How many employees in your office? Uh, two, and I'll vouch for both of them. I have a copy man and a secretary. I farm out my artwork. It's a small agency, but I do well. Are you married? No, I was, but it didn't work. Mr. Devlin, are you certain that you can't think of anyone to have a reason for sending you this letter? Absolutely not. Besides, as I said before, there's nothing in my past I'm ashamed of. Well, may we have a folder for these, please? Of course. Uh, June? Yes, Mr. Devlin? Uh, bring in an office folder. Yes, sir. Isn't there anything at all that you can tell us that might help us on this? Nothing. It's a lot of baloney to me. Thank you, June. There's a call for you on two. He wouldn't give his name. It sounded strange. If that's a follow-up call on this, tell him you're getting the money and arrange a meeting. Hold it a second. I got it. Yeah, I'm getting the money. By tomorrow, you'll what? Listen, you little crumb, I'll go with you anywhere, anytime. I'll go with broken bottles, switchblades, or clubs. Look, I was an orphan at 12, and I've been taking care of myself ever since. Do you think I'm scared of some no-good yellow rat? Hello? Hello? He hung up. You don't say. I haven't been that mad in quite a while. I just got mad, you know, couldn't help it. We'll let you know what we come up with. Sure. Well, thanks for coming over. I'm sorry. Quite a character, that Devlin. Didn't seem a bit phased by that letter. No, he didn't. You know, that phone voice threatened him. 
Said he'd give some story to the papers. Then Devlin blew his top and the guy hung up. Was there any indication that he wanted to disguise his voice? Yeah, it was muffled. Probably the old gag with a cloth over the phone. Did he indicate what it was he had on Devlin? No. The fact that the voice was disguised could mean that Devlin knows him well. That's possible. Let's drop this off at the hall and check that post office substation. Sunset substation? No. Well, here's where we're going. June Costa. Yeah, she called a little while ago. Said that she had some information for us, wanted to see us at her home. She left Devlin's office early, said she was sick. What does she want to see us about? I know, just something she thought we ought to know. Oh, Maury said he'd get that lab report and the letter out right away, and Fred's calling the postal inspectors for us. Right. Won't you come in? You understand you have some information for us, Miss Carstairs? Yes, I do. Or at least I think I do. I'm not sure how to begin. I mean... Well, I, I'd like this treated confidentially, without Mr. Devlin's knowledge. Well, that might be a large order. After all, Mr. Devlin is the intended victim. Well, I, I know, but the person I'm going to tell you about might not have written that letter. In other words, you think you know someone who might have written the letter? I, I think so. And who is that? My brother. What is your brother's full name, Miss Carstairs? Sidney. Sidney Jameson Carstairs. And where does he live? Here. We share this apartment. Or we did. What do you mean by that? I haven't seen Sidney in nearly a week. That's one reason why I think he might have something to do with the letter. Sid worked for Mr. Devlin. He was copy man for the Devlin agency. Six months ago, they... They argued about a campaign theme. Sid can be pretty positive. That's one reason why he's never stayed at a job very long. And, well, you've seen Mr. Devlin's temper. Well, you know your brother better than we do. Can you give us any good reason why Devlin didn't mention this to us when we talked to him? I think so. To protect me, probably. Outside of the office, he's pretty fond of me. I mean, well, it might get serious. Well, did you and your brother ever discuss this fight he had with Devlin? No. He wouldn't talk about it. But he's the kind of person who nurses a hate. What does he look like? He's just 30, 5'10", brown eyes and hair. And he's probably wearing a light gray suit. It isn't here any longer. Does he have any distinguishing physical characteristics? A scar on his face. Here, on the left. Do you have a recent photograph of your brother around? I'd like to borrow this, if you don't mind. Oh, another call came from Devlin while you were out. He received a second letter. Resnick and I went out to pick it up. I'm just taking it to the lab. Same threats in the letter? Yeah, and a couple things added. Price is now going up to 15000 Any instructions on the delivery of the money? No. Could mean that Devlin will get another phone call. We'll need his cooperation. I think Devlin took this second letter a little more seriously than he took the first. Said he recognized the scrawled writing. He opened the envelope very carefully and the letter only by one corner. If the lab doesn't put up with anything on the first letter, we might get lucky on this one. We'd better call the postal inspectors and give them the dope on this Carstairs photograph. One thing more. Devlin has a time limit this trip. Yeah, when? Noon tomorrow. He'll be killed. We'll check this photograph out with the substation as soon as we can to let you know. We appreciate your help, Jim. Post office is always happy to cooperate, Ben. Think there's anything to this map? Well, it's hard to say, Jim, but it's all we have to go on so far. We'll have something by morning. I'll see you, boys. Yeah. 
Well, I've checked the lab on the first letter. It's negative. Doesn't look like we're going to get anything on the second letter, either. Jim is going to have the postal employees check out that Karstadt's photograph. I'm running Karstadt's through the Bureau. There can't be too many extortion priors with scarred faces. We'll check it. Yes, we better put a 24-hour stake out on Devon. That letter writer is serious. He's liable to move up that deadline of noon tomorrow. Sydney car stairs? Nothing yet. Postal inspectors came up with a possible witness who identified the car stairs photo, though. A woman named Mrs. Gresham. She works at a special delivery window at Sunset Substation. Let's get right over there, then. Okay. Officers, like to ask a few questions, if you don't mind. Well, I'm Mrs. Gresham. What do you want to know? I guess I know everybody in this section of the town. Well, everybody comes in here to mail letters, that is. I've been here a number of years. 22, to be exact. Well, I can remember back when this building was... The... We only want you to remember back to yesterday, Mrs. Gresham. <laughs> okay, shoot. I understand you identified a photograph of a man the postal inspector showed you. Yeah, he was in here yesterday morning. You're positive? Yep. He looks something like my oldest son. My son has a scar on his face, too, from an accident. That's why this man stuck in my mind, I guess. What did he do, Mrs. Gresham? Well, he bought a special delivery stamp, and he posted a letter, and even had me check the weight. Do you usually examine all special delivery letters passing through this window? Well, if you mean if I'm curious, mm, no. But I usually check for proper postage when they ask me to. Is it possible that you would remember a an envelope that passed through this window if you checked it? Well, maybe, if there was something distinctive about it. How about this envelope? Yep. Now, remember that writing. Unusual. Almost like a kid. But this fellow was no kid that handed it to me. He was the man in the picture the inspector showed me. Anything else you can tell us? Well, he wanted to make sure that this letter would be received as soon as possible. Did he happen to say why? He said it was a matter of life and death. <laughs> kind of smiling when he said it. Funny thing to smile about, isn't it? <laughs> something for you. Bureau pulled these extortion priors fitting our possible description. Carcer seems like a pretty good bet to me. Well, right now it seems so, it might be. Better call Mrs. Gresham at the Sunset Substation Post Office. Arrange to have her come down and take a look at these mug shots for possible identification. Right. Well, ben, I almost forgot to tell you. We've got an early visitor, Stanley Devlin. Oh. Matt, give you eight to five when we pick up Carstairs, we got our man. Yeah, I was something Fred, you jump to conclusions in this business, you're dead. Hi, Inspector. Hi, Devlin. Well, tell me, you fellas find this letter already yet? Not yet, but we'll let you know. <laughs> well, I wish you'd find it. It's beginning to make me nervous. Well, if you hadn't blown your top yesterday on the telephone, we might have him in jail now. Yeah, I know I was wrong. If he calls, it won't happen again. Anything else we can do for you? Well, no, no, I, I guess not. Then stay away from here. Go back to your office. That extortionist may be following you. After all, he's given you to 12 noon today to get up the money. <laughs> well, that's ridiculous. You think I haven't been checking up? I know when I'm being scouted. I was a combat soldier, don't forget. There have been two police officers on you since yesterday afternoon, Mr. Devlin. Now, would you mind going back to your office? You can get that phone call if it comes in. Yeah, yeah, sure. I, um, uh, I guess you fellas know your business, don't you? Yeah, I guess we do. 
Well, remember, that call comes in, just try to stall him. Tell him you'll get the money and ask him for instructions. Yes, sir. Uh, anything else? One more thing. Do you know any men with scars on their faces? June told you about her brother, huh? To protect you, yes. Well, he's a good kid, really. Just got a temper like me, that's all. But he's not a crawler. It takes a pretty slimy type to do a thing like this. Sidney Carstairs would never send a threatening letter. I know. Well, I'll, uh... I'll see you, huh? Yeah. Hello. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess we'd better get upstairs to the lineup, huh? Postal inspector just called. Mrs. Gresham says she thinks the same man came into the post office again a few minutes ago. You ask Moody to take over the lineup, Fred. And call the Terraville station. Have them alert all the radio cars in the vicinity of that post office. Right. <laughs> Mrs. Gresham thinks this same man just came in here again. Positive, officer. I recognized him right off, not more than 15 minutes ago. Did you see which way he went when he left here? No. Did you notice whether he got into a car? No, I'm sorry, but it was the same man. What did he do when he came in here? Well, he bought a special delivery stamp, of course. Did he mail another letter? No, no, not this time. Anything else you can tell us? That's about all. Thank you. Thanks very much. Inspectors 32 just got a 901 over the air. Call your station. That's you boys, isn't it? Yeah, thanks, Sergeant. Uh, we've got cars covering the vicinity, but there's nothing yet. Well, let us know if they come up with anything. Right. There's a call box, 16th and Lawton. All right, Fred, I got it. Matt! Hold on. Take this down, will you? Well, go ahead, Fred. That's the Civic Center Plaza. Two o'clock, money in a small satchel. All right, Fred, we'll get right on this and call you back. And have Jabot stand by in the office with you. Right. Get down to the Civic Center. says that Devlin took the call at his office and played it very well, apparently. He's agreed to drop the $15,000 in the satchel as instructed. Supposed to make the drop at two, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, at least we have some time to set it up. Well, he's supposed to put the satchel under a hedge by a bench. A bench on the Larkin side of the North Fountain and take off. We'll have to stake out around the plaza, hidden so the suspect can't see us and use walkie-talkies. One of the boys could pose as a workman in the street. You, man. Okay, we'll get permission from the telephone company to use one of their manholes. Let's check the location down at the plaza and then go to Devlin's office. Well, uh, who uh, supplies the money and then the uh, satchel? That'll be taken care of by the police and the money will be marked. It'll be treated with a fluorescent powder so the courtroom evidence will be conclusive. I see. You, uh, you fellas do this sort of thing all the time, don't you? I mean... Take these chances. That's right. We're paid to do it. You're not. We're just asking you to help us. Okay, I'll go with you. If you can go, so can I. All right, now, what kind of a car will you be driving so we can recognize you? Studebecker. Golden Hawk. You think Sid Carstairs is behind this, don't you? Well, it begins to look that way. His description matches what we have, and so does some of the evidence. You fellas never talk about the chances you take, do you? And you, you don't spout off about the close shaves. What are you trying to say, Devlin? Ever since the war, I've sounded off about being a hero. Maybe that's what Carstairs has in me. I don't know. I suppose if it got out, it would ruin me. I was never in the combat infantry. Matter of fact, I was never in the service at all. I ducked the draft. We know that. 
One man fitting Carstairs' description coming south on Larkin. Now entering Plaza from Larkin. Town one. Suspect is picking up drop. Oh, he's moving between you and town two. Heading towards City Hall. Right. I'll move in behind him. Base one, stand by. Town two, he's moving in your direction. Town three, ready. Sydney Carstairs? Yes. I'm crooked and I know it. Would you have used this gun on Devlin if he hadn't paid off? That's something you never know, will you? We don't really care. But your sister might. What did you have on Devlin that he was willing to pay to keep quiet? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. You mean you just led him to believe you had something on him? Sure. I figured I could make him believe his life was like an open book. Everybody has something in his past he doesn't want people to know about. Well, they convicted Carstairs. Verdict just came down. Yeah. Why are people such fools, Ben? What makes them go haywire? They're like Carstairs. I don't know. Don't suppose we'll ever know.